Hey guys, welcome back to another how-to episode. Today we're installing our all-new Z1 Fukas front upper control arms. So uh, today we're going to show you on our Twins 370Z. Uh, this fits a plethora of other vehicles as well, so including the new Z, Q50, Q60, G37 and G35 sedan. Um, but yeah, today they're going on the 370 and we're going to show you just how it's done. Alright guys, so as a quick disclaimer, some vehicles you're able to do this job without removing the shock absorber, usually in OEM uh, suspension applications. We have the Z1 lowering springs on this vehicle today, which will not allow us to remove the bolts from the stock Fukas. So we're going to go ahead and drop this shock absorber if you have standard shocks. So you can skip this step. Uh, but however, today we're going to show you also how to remove the shocks. All right, so first step is opening our hood. And then we're going to remove our strut brace. We're very fortunate to have our Z1 strut brace here. Uh, but if you have a standard one, just remove the standard strut brace. About 14 millimeter. So in this particular vehicle, we have our supercharger kit. So we do have to remove our intake pipe here. Uh, yours may look different being naturally aspirated, um, but yeah, most likely you're going to need to at least adjust or just wiggle this pipe out of the way. Next step, we're going to remove our wheels. All right, with our 12 mil, we're now going to remove our shocks. So to give us more uh, room to move our shock absorber down, we are going to loosen off our sway bars. Uh, I would do them from the sway bar side, not from the shock absorber side. Uh, just has a lot less complexity involved from there. Okay, so with our 19 and our 17, we can now remove our sway bar. One, and we'll do the same to the other side. Okay, so next we're gonna remove our brake line. Uh, we're not gonna entirely remove it, we're just gonna remove it off the bracket. Uh, this just gives us a little bit more wiggle room and also doesn't uh, risk damaging our brake lines at all. This is using a 12 millimeter socket and you will need a long socket to get these ones off. So, okay, so with our 14 millimeters, we are now going to remove the Fuca bolt. So now that we have everything loose, we can just pop this up again, just being careful as everything will now move. Okay, so now that we have everything loose, we can actually just push this entire arm down and we've now loosened our shock out of the way to gain access to our Fuca bolts. So these are the bolts we have to remove, the 14 millimeter bolts. If you can get a gun in there, great, but we're going to use some hand tools today. Okay, so now that everything's loose, we can now just simply remove our Fuka. Okay, so we can see the difference between our stock Fuka and the upgraded Z1 Fuka. We have full adjustment on our ends here, unlike stock, which is just set. 
So each of these Fukas are directional. So from the factory, we have a left side and on the Z1 kit, we also have a left side. The way to tell the difference between left and right is when you're sitting inside the vehicle. So if you're sitting inside the car, your left side and your right side. Uh, that's the easiest way to remember it. So we have our fully adjustable arms here and we've gone with the street bushes. We do have a greasing point, which does need to remain at the bottom, like so. And then we do also want to screw uh, this adjustment here, uh, which is a left-handed thread. We want to screw this all the way so it's facing out on both sides. Once we've done that, we're going to thread our new bushes here into place. And then what I like to do so that not everyone has an alignment machine at their house, what we can do is go ahead, screw these all the way down until they are there. And we're gonna do the same for the other side. What I like to do so that you don't have a really funky alignment when you're leaving your house is just matching the length of the Z1 Fuka with your stock Fuka. That way you don't have a crazy amount of camber and you can get yourself safely to your nearest alignment shop of choice. And once we have these tight, as I said, just leave this here, leave this one at the bottom. And now we're going to move these threads. So with these little nipple bleeders on the bottom, we're now going to use our 13 millimeter. While holding this end, we're going to allow this to stretch out at the same time. As you can see, it's moving both sides here. This awesome little design. And I'm just going to try and match up our Fukas here, like so. So we have these both matching. Okay, so now we have our Fuka lined up just close to the stock specs. We're now going to install them into their places. It's going to be a little bit tricky, with, especially with fresh rubbers and fresh bushes here, but you can wiggle them into place like so. We're then going to use our original hardware. Slide one bolt in. Get it always started by hand. There's one. The same for this side. A bit of a wiggle wiggle. Okay. Also start him by hand. All right, so it's very important that you follow our online instructions also as different year model vehicles do have some different requirements. So our 09 and 10 models, 370Z, uh, you do need to torque these Fuka bolts into the body to 52 foot pound, but 2011 onward uh, is only 40 foot pounds. So just be sure to read through our instructions. It's found on the listing uh, on our website and you can read through absolutely everything as well as follow along this video. So being that ours is a 2015, we're going ahead at the 40 foot pound. And do the same for the other side. So now we've talked our flickers into place, we can reinstall our shock absorber. Get some nuts in there to secure it. Zip up our shocks. And I always just like to ensure that these are 100% hand tight. Okay, so now we have our Fukas tightened. We have the shock tightened. Now we can lower the Fuka onto our stub here. Now this is removable. And it's gonna be a little tricky. You may wanna use a jack from beneath to help lift this into place. So you see the jack is just helping lift this into place. 
and we can install our hardware again. Now with our 14s, time to tighten these Fuka bolts back up. And remember to reinstall your brake line. Okay guys, so now we've finished doing the Fukas on our driver's side. Uh, now if you're moving to the other side where the power steering reservoir is, you would repeat the same steps, except we do supply you with new bolts for the power steering reservoir. So that's one step extra that you'll have to take as per the online instructions. Another strong recommendation is greasing these Fukas uh, after they've been installed, just to make sure that they are full of grease and then re-greasing them every 5,000 miles. And again, for the street arms, we do recommend also tightening everything with the preload of a jack or on the ground. Uh, so just be sure to follow those instructions to the T and you will not have any problems. All right guys, so all we're gonna do now is just reverse the process of how we uninstalled everything. We're going to reinstall. Um, make sure everything is tight. Finally, you are playing around with your suspension components. So we wanna make sure we're extra safe there and then get your car to the alignment rack as quickly as possible. Don't let them sit like this as we don't wanna give you uneven wear on your tires uh, or any other components of the vehicle. If you have any questions, you're stuck, please feel free to give our tech support team a call or email at any time. Other than that, enjoy your brand new Fukas and have fun with your Z. And remember, for all of your Nissan and Infiniti needs, head on over to z1motorsports.com and get yourself sorted out today. Huh?